China has officially stopped all foreign adoption, and this has a lot of people wondering why. Yeah, let's take a look at some of the news clip headlines. China stops foreign adoptions, ending a complicated chapter. Why did China stop its foreign adoption program? Beijing said the move was in line with international trends as more countries have limited such adoptions. Many would-be adoptive families are left in limbo. Wow, so China's trying to say... It's trendy now, so that's why we're doing it. But anyways, guys, we're going to get into this, the reasons why China may have cut uh, foreign adoption right now. And it is messing with a lot of families who are in limbo, who are in the process of adopting a Chinese baby, but now they can't, and that's very disappointing for them. Right, right, right. And, you know, I will say this early on. That's sort of the way China does things. Mm. Like, they could have eased into this a little bit better or allowed the pending cases to process, then ended it. But, obviously, when you do things in a very, like, heavy-handed, strict way, like... Yeah, you make a lot of people mad. Yeah, China doesn't care about uh, feelings. Let's just say that. Uh, for better or for worse. For, but, with its own people, outside yeah. people. I mean, that's just how it is. I mean, I guess, David, let's just really quickly talk about oh, the past few decades. Obviously, we've known Chinese adoptees ourselves. We also know Korean adoptees, for example. So a lot of countries at a time when in need or, or if a, another country is doing better than another country, then oftentimes they will adopt from the other countries. Right? Yeah, I mean, if you grew up anywhere around america everybody knows an adopted asian yes like it's a very common trend uh south korea still actually has it going on but they have many programs in place that highly prioritize domestic mm -hmm. adoption and that's sort of the phase that china's trying to move into right. now a lot of people are saying this is spurred by the population problem obviously it was initially started three decades ago by the one child policy and i guess a lot of people are saying like what are the reasons why Right. And so we're going to get into a list of possible reasons why, which I don't think it's fully clear what the single reason is or if there's multiple reasons. For, there's probably multiple reasons. And then we're going to get into the reactions of even some uh, Chinese adoptees on the Internet. So everybody, please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. Number one, it could be for population reasons, because for the second year in a row, Andrew, China has had a negative birth rate, meaning that uh, the population is shrinking. Right. So I think they figure like, hey, guys, if our if people are having less babies and people are getting married less, then maybe we should try to keep as many Chinese kids as possible and do internal adopting. And I think that this is probably the number one reason that people are going to because they think from a mathematical standpoint, it kind of makes sense. But I think the only reason why I don't think this is the only reason, although I think this is one of the reasons why, is because over, let's say, the past 35 years since adopting from China has been a popular thing, uh, there's been about 82,000 adoptees from China to America, for example. Now, 82,000, that is quite a few people, but over the span of 35 years and in the sense of China's uh, general population, it's not that many people to really make a dent in the decline, you know what I mean? But other people were saying that of that 82,000, obviously there was a mixture of people in there, but it was mostly girls. Yes, that is true. So, I, I mean, I think if it's like, if, if it was either, okay, we're gonna uh, let people adopt 10,000 uh, Chinese baby girls over the, every year for the next 20 years, that's probably, we could, we should be able to support those people ourselves. Right, right, right. And by the way, guys, the majority of kids that are given up for adoption are either female or kids with disabilities. Moving on, number two, it could be a statement of we don't need to allow overseas adoption anymore because we have better systems, uh, better uh, systems for single mothers, better systems for uh, in the orphanages or foster care, et cetera, et cetera. It has to do with confidence in internal system building. Yeah, and uh, I mean, you know, the foreign adoption thing, it was... Mostly because, like, China had a fear that they could not support more kids, right? That's why they had the one-child policy. It led to a lot of ugly stories, a lot of terrible stories of uh, especially baby girls getting, you know, thrown away and essentially, you know, these her to terrible stories. But the, the reason was because they were scared they couldn't support it. So now China's like, hey, guys, we're a lot better now. We can support everybody in our country. We don't have to let people adopt our kids right uh number three it may just be a point of pride in the sense of like trying to let people know we're not a country that gives up our babies to western countries anymore yeah. I, I think it's partially nationalism for the internal market like as much as some people and we're going to talk about maybe the geopolitical play or the symbol symbolism behind this but essentially china would try to tell its own citizens like hey everybody 
we can handle this and we're not just going to like, because a country, you know, for nationalism, you want to keep your people essentially. Right, right, right. right. Well, especially it's saying like the West is not incredibly so superior to us anymore that we just got to like offload everything that we can't handle. Right, because it, it was out of desperity usually to let, people adopt thousands of babies, yeah. but, right? Uh, like, but I do think, uh, for example, Russia and recently ended adoption only to America. Oh. So that was more geopolitical because if you know, Russia and America are kind of at a proxy war through Ukraine right now. We're number, not going to let America take any more of our babies. Number four, China has promoted domestic adoption over the past few years. Like we said, you, you get... Uh, if people are having less babies, that might mean there's more couples that want to adopt. Yeah, I do think adopting is a little bit more accepted in China than it was 20 years ago. I think that there was, obviously there's this stigma of like, okay, adopted kids, well, what families do they come from? Or if people didn't want them for some reason. But I think in China, yes, now people are actually kind of trying to adopt. So 90% of adoptions in China from the statistic that I found are domestic. So China's not adopting too many foreign babies, really. Right, right, right. Point number five, um, it's just flexing, showing that they, they could just change programs whenever they want. Yeah, I think that, is this, David, a kind of a geopolitical flex a little bit? Just being like, yeah, you know, like, uh, we'll just, you just can't have any more babies. Um, possibly. I mean, I know in China, I'll tell you this, man. They make decisions just quick. They do not feel the need to ease the international community into anything. No. Uh, point number six um, maybe just all children are more value nowadays. And point number seven, I will say this, man, this, this is my major takeaway from this, because in terms of this actual adoption sort of minutia, I'm not too familiar with it, but I will say this. It is true that the Chinese government makes very brash decisions. I don't know how it takes place internally, but the way they implement it on an international scale, is kind of just like, yeah, that's what we decided to do. We're going to change the ship. Yeah. And I think that that's the thing that it's kind of like, uh, maybe it's like they probably could think of a better way to do that. Mm. So I guess, David, for reactions to this, like, obviously I'm not an adoptee and, you know, but we wanted, I went into the subreddit, the adoptee subreddit to get some reactions of, from other Chinese adoptees. And I think they actually kind of had surprisingly a range of reactions. Right, right, right. And I think the range of reactions is based off the fact that Andrew, Every adoptee has a wildly variable experience being raised by, quote unquote, like a white family in America. Like some people get born in, uh, adopted by an upper middle class family in San Francisco, and they're like learning Chinese from a young age along with their parents. And then there's people who get adopted to like rural, rural Wyoming, and they like struggle with their identity every single day when they looked in the mirror. Yes, that is true. Yeah. And I think that that's the crazy thing about it. Because look, look at all these different reactions. Not sure how to process this. I kind of feel relieved that there won't be future adoptees completely severed from the roots like me. But I also feel hollow. It makes me think, why did it have to be like this? What was the point of it all? Mm. Somebody said, this hits us really hard as a Chinese American op adoptee. Don't even know what to think. We're just going to exist as a demographic within a demographic, a niche within a niche. There won't be any Chinese American adoptees in Gen Alpha. We're just product of a birth in a certain time, in a certain place. But in the end, aren't we all? Actually, yo, this comment was actually very poetic. And he does make the point that maybe this mass Chinese adoption, uh, yeah, it's probably not ever going to be at the same level again you know but but again nothing is like due to war and and migration there's all these stories and identities that are not going to be replicated or imitated or repeated you know what i mean like the chinese diaspora or the or the chiu Zhao diaspora from vietnam and then the vietnam war they got to move to cambodia and thailand and then they come to america right, which creates such delicious noodles right right well that's one of the the positive byproducts of it yes the chiu Zhao noodles are delicious but that whole identity is not going to be replicated and that's not becoming more, you know? So not no, no, every identity, it'll, it'll yeah. cease to exist forever. Yeah, it's just, it's it's from a certain place and time. And yeah, so I guess shout out to the Chinese adoptees out there. I think that however they identify, they, they should, you know, like keep, keep, keeping up with that identity. Yeah. Uh, this person says, as a Chinese ad adoptee, I'm happy I was adopted and not left for dead in an orphanage years ago. This kind of pisses me off. I hope those children will get the care they need, but I doubt they will. I suffered from severe malnutrition as a baby orphan in China, and I would have been, 
uh, would have died if I had not been adopted. So this person was like very, very grateful. Right, right, right. Uh, But then there's other people that are more like, well, I had a terrible time growing up in my adopted family and I feel like such emotional trauma from it. So how can I feel grateful for it? So you see, like I said, um, this is a really interesting one. It says, Conflicting feelings as a Chinese adoptee. International adoption only opened up in 1992, so the oldest of us are only in our early 30s. I feel the same sense of loss, and yeah, this was necessary when the one-child policy ended in 2016. This feels like a bittersweet end of an era for a generation of Chinese people. I can't help but feel like we were discarded in China's sprint toward economic development, and now we're just a relic of a bygone chapter in China's modern history. Mm. That's a really interesting comment. Basically, they're saying like, it's bittersweet, but like you said to the previous comment, who are we? Are we just like disappearing to the sands I, of time? No, I mean, the truth is we're all, everybody, me, you, everybody watching, we're all a product of the times. We're all a product of what happened. And yeah, it's, again, this Chinese American adoptees, I'm not saying there will be zero more ever in the future, but it's really, it's, it's just not, yeah, it's not an identity that's going well, to be repeated. Yeah, yeah, by the way, they are making exceptions for anybody who's related or like stepchildren or something like that. For example, like the only person who can adopt is left in America and the family, those kids will still be able to be processed. Right. Um, I guess, Andrew, this led into a bunch of discussions saying like, why do white people want to adopt Chinese girls so much when there's like other kids in foster care or orphanages in America waiting to be adopted? Yeah. This, this, this was like, these are auxiliary sort of like side conversations. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's definitely a, a lot of, uh, there was a lot of interesting discussion there about why not more adopt domestically? Why do Americans adopt from overseas so often where there's so many kids in America that need help themselves? But hey, a lot of people were saying it's because you, it makes it easier because it's like you're getting a, a fresh kid versus like a kid who's like going to have an uncle like that's going to come find you or something like that. Yeah, again, there, there's, I'm not saying that you should or shouldn't. I mean, hey, I'm not, I haven't had this conversation. It's not something I'm initially looking into. So I think that's why. But yes, there's a ton of different layers of like, well, the kid's family is still in America. Where are they at? They're like a local kid. Like, do you, do you adopt locally from some kid who grew up? 20 minutes down the, <laughs> in the other side of the city or do you adopt across the country or whatever, you know? So I think there's a lot of different reasons why people do it. But I guess like overall, I guess like I do think, I do think overall there is the declining birth rate uh, issue and China's like, hey, we might as well keep as many kids as we can. We can <clears throat> afford to financially support all our kids now. And hopefully they have better systems, especially for the disabled kids, yeah. man, or, or the orphanage system. Yeah, and I also think another reason is uh, from a nationalistic standpoint and from a geopolitical standpoint, China's probably thinking like, yeah, well, if America's our rival, why would we give them more Chinese people if we don't have to? Yeah, <laughs> like, I mean, uh, I, think, I think that's another reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I mean, guys, let us know what you think are the reasons in the comments section below. I think it's like, absolutely a move that seems in line with global trends like we said south korea had its adoption program from 1950 all the way to 2019 that's when it like seriously yeah. seriously slowed down from south korea which is an american ally let alone the whole geopolitical like frenemy cold yeah. war there we're at with you know the panda diplomacy and everything between china and america if even south korea is going to slow it right then what do you think china is going to do yeah right? i mean the biggest reason why countries do mass foreign adoption is because they're desperate and they don't think that they can support these kids and that these kids are not even going to have a chance. Well, they think it'll crush the infrastructure, Yeah, right? they think it'll crush the infrastructure or that they, they these kids will I, just die I on the I guess my, so my like, biggest takeaway from this, and I actually don't think that there's like as much as other, all the Reddits and this, you know, this especially depending on where you are in the political spectrum, you're going to read into this or read into that aspect or, or the identity aspect or the more of the, the, the financial aspect or the population aspect. My whole thing is like, Man, uh, it, it, it is in line with global trends, but I wish that the, the Chinese government would have let the pending cases go through. Mm. You know what I mean? Because yeah. then it would have avoid, avoided all the negative, the hyper negativity around it. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, guys, listen, let us know what you think in the comment section below. Until next time, we're the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.